I think it's fair to say that today's gospel account of the rich man and Lazarus is what we call a classic. And I suspect that many of us relate more to Lazarus and enjoy on some level the reversal of the fortunes of the two men, at least at first thought. But what I've often missed is that it's Lazarus's name that we know, not the rich man who dressed in royal purple and had all the world had to offer. It got me thinking two things. Did God bring Lazarus to heaven simply because he had suffered on earth and to send a message to the rich? And secondly, what's in a name? Now, I was thinking about name recognition yesterday when Father Bobby was preaching at Mass. Two thoughts at once, Father Bobby. <laughs> Father Bobby mentioned that Robert and Dorothy Hope had served the church as missionaries in a heroic manner. And my first thought was, I didn't know that the comedian Bob Hope and his wife did that. Well, that's because it was another Bob Hope and his wife who did. <laughs> Incidentally, the entertainer, Bob Hope's wife, Dolores, not Dorothy, helped Father Peyton over many years, along with her famous husband, Bob, in Father Peyton's efforts. Back to the homily. <laughs> so often, I think we'd agree that our culture sees our value in whether people know our name, whether it's in a neighborhood, a city, a state, a country, or even on a world level. We have the expression that he or she has made a name for themselves. Sports stars, entertainers, politicians, businessmen and women, etc., are sometimes name, known by their names or even just their first names if they're very famous. But in the gospel, it may be that someone was a great leader or a bad one. It may be that it was a person who was poor or average means or even wealthy if God wants to make a point. Most likely, the rich man's name was known by many and it carried weight in his community. Lazarus, on the other hand, at best, would be known by a few, and he would be pitied. What really matters is God knows all of us by our names. And we should make it a priority to please God by how we live, and not the world, by making a name for ourselves. This means humbly and consistently uniting our will to God's, but how do we keep this in mind in a world where successful and powerful and popular people are rewarded? Ready for this? It's simple. It's how we start our day. Many of you, maybe all of you, have learned a, excuse me, a prayer that we call the morning offering to God. In it is this declaration that we offer Jesus. Our prayers our works, our joys, and our sufferings of our day for all the intentions of his sacred heart. When we begin our day with this intention, we not only make what we do in offering to God, but we also remind ourselves whom we seek to please, please first and foremost. And here's another great part. Whether we succeed or we struggle, we offer our efforts to God. And unlike most of the world, God always sees our efforts in doing the good, whether we succeed in the world's eyes or not, he sees it as meaningful. Given this belief, it was not simply to punish the rich man that Lazarus went to heaven, but it was because that although he endured many hardships, <coughs> Lazarus trusted in God. A lesson for all of us who might feel beaten down by the world at times. My brothers and sisters, this is also a reminder to all of us, no matter what our station in life, to look out for those who are less fortunate, whether in terms of physical, emotional, or spiritual poverty, beginning in our own families. God wants us to see and help those who embody Lazarus in our lives. May our actions, may our words today match those of the will of our loving God.